Hi, this is Chandrasekhar Prabhu once again. On the 9th of July 2021, an amendment was finally approved to be implemented with immediate effect. And that amendment is to DCR 337. DCR 337 is for old and dilapidated cest buildings. As you know, the cest buildings are only in the island city of Mumbai, which means from Kulaba on one side up to Mahim on the other and Sion on the third side, a triangular piece of land which is called the island city of Mumbai which comprises the southern part, the South Mumbai, the South Central and portion of North Central Mumbai. The suburbs of Bandra and Kurla are not included in the island city. The tenants residing in what used to be 19,800 buildings, which have subsequently been reduced to 14,800 buildings now because MADA has reconstructed a lot of these buildings and a few of them have been redeveloped by the developers. Now in these buildings, the FSI that used to be available initially was three plus fungible on one side or whatever is required to accommodate the existing residents plus an incentive area of 50% is what was existing. Which means if 80% as we all know that 80% of Mumbai's old and dilapidated cest buildings are either one room tenements or two room tenements, which means they are either 100 square feet or less than that, or maybe 200 square feet or a little less than that, or more than that. The government in its wisdom over a period of years has decided that no redevelopment tenement would be less than 300 square feet plus fungible area. The fungible being 35% of the 300 square feet. So roughly working out to 405 square feet. When 33.7 was amended very recently in DCR 2034, the existing residents were permitted 5% additional area over and above what they were initially entitled to, which means 315 square feet plus fungible of 35% working out to roughly 425 to 430 square feet. Now this is carpet area, converting this into built up area makes it about 500 odd square feet of built up area and 50% of that would be given as incentive. Under the new scheme, this incentive has been increased from 75% up to 100% with 75 to 85% for single buildings up to 90% for two or more buildings and up to 100% if the buildings are more and the plots are four or five as the case may be. Earlier, whatever you got as incentive is virtually doubled. Now, how does it affect the tenants. 
in place of 5% over and above 300 square feet that they were entitled to, their entitlement has been increased by 3 more percent to 8%. That means instead of the 300 square feet plus fungible that they would have normally got, they are not enti now entitled to 300 plus 8 percent that means 324 square feet plus 35 percent fungible which means around around 105 plus 8 so 100 and 13 square feet over and above the 300 square feet which which means the putting the fungible together putting the fungible together it works out to 300 plus 24 square feet at 8 percent and a fungible of 113 so 424 and 434, 437. So roughly 440 square feet is what they are presently entitled to. So how much does a tenant gain? Maybe 10 or 15 square feet extra. And how much does the developer gain? He gains virtually double. Now let us understand from actual money point of view how much he gains. We have taken a few case studies of different parts of Mumbai. Let's take the first case study in Girgaum. There is a building in Girgaum on 2000 square meters accommodating 200 tenants. The present area occupied by the tenants is between 80 and 85 square feet, 10 by 8, 10 by 8 and a half. That is the area per room is occupying. However, the built up area is a little more because all the toilets are common toilets. Taking 80 to 100 square feet today, Presently, they are roughly occupying 200 and 200. So about 2,000 square feet. If you take built up area, including the common passages and the toilet, it would come to 2,500 to at the most 2,600 square feet. Now under the new dispensation, they otherwise would have been entitled to 200 to 415 square feet carpet area now at 415 square feet carpet area the 200 members would be entitled to roughly around 81000 to 82000 square feet and the incentive area would be 40 odd thousand square feet in carpet area. If you take it in built up area, the built up area would be around 1 lakh square feet and the sellable built up area would be 50,000 square feet. In Girgaum, the selling price is between 40 and 50,000 rupees per square feet. Even if we take at 40,000 rupees per square feet, 50,000 square feet sold at 40,000 rupees per square feet would fetch a revenue of 200 crores. Now for a revenue of 200 crores, let us calculate the cost that the builder will have to bear. Total square feet construction is 1,50,000 plus 10% 
for common passages and 10% for lift and staircases, taking it to about 1,80,000 square feet, and car parking and other things, if you add it to that, the cost of construction, even if you take at the highest possible, would come out to at the most 60 crores. It doesn't come beyond 60 crores because the cost of constructing stilts and car park is barely 1,600 rupees per square feet unless you go into basement. Even if you go into basement, the average car park construction cost of basement plus stilts doesn't exceed 2,000 rupees. The cost of lift and staircases doesn't exceed 1,600. Even then, we have calculated the cost on a higher side to be 60 crores. We have calculated all the premiums to be paid to the municipal corporation, the fire brigade authority, to all authorities and premium on fungible. The fungible for the existing residents is free of cost, but the premium on fungible for the sellable area and the extra area all considered together does not exceed 20 crores of rupees. So a construction cost of 60 crores plus 20 crores makes it 80 crores. Even if we calculate at the rate of 25,000 rupees rent per month per family, we are talking of three years, one, one year's rent would be about three lakhs of rupees, three years rent would be nine lakhs of rupees, nine lakhs of rupees into 200 would not exceed 20 crores of rupees. So 60 plus 20 is 80 and another 20 becomes a hundred crores rupees cost. Then the cost of money and all put together out of a revenue of 200 crores, the net profit, net profit under any circumstances, even if you take 24% interest for the money will not be less than 80 crores, maybe 70, but let us take it. It would be 80 crores. Now let us take the new dispensation in place of one lakh built up area for the residents. The residents would get maybe one lakh 10,000 square feet. And the sellable area in place of 50,000 square feet would be anywhere between 85 to 100,000 square feet. At 85,000 square feet, even at 80,000 square feet, at 40,000 rupees per square feet, it comes to 320 crores. At 100,000 uh, rupees per, at 100,000 square feet of selling price, at 40,000 rupees per square feet, the revenue becomes 400 crores which means the profit of the developer in the earlier dispensation was 80 crores in the new dispensation at the lowest possible calculations at the sellable area of 80,000 square feet, which is the lowest, it can't be lower than that, comes to a minimum of from 80 crores to minimum of 110 crores to 120 crores. Straight away, the cost increases by the, the, the profit increases from 80 crores to 200 crores, 120 crores extra profit. How have we calculated that? In the earlier dispensation, 50,000 square feet. 
sold at 40000 rupees per square feet makes it 200 crores the cost of construction would be and all costs would be 100 crores cost of money even if it is taken at 20 crores would be 120 and 80 crores rupees profit in the new dispensation 320 crores revenue and the cost at the most would not exceed 125 crores or 130 crores so in any case 320 crores means 190 to 200 crores profit in the lowest taking 80,000 square feet for sale if it is 100,000 then it increases substantially over and above that that means while the tenant gets 10 to 12 square feet extra the builder straight away doubles his profit from 80 crores to 200 crores that means he gets 120 crores extra profit for giving pittance just about 15 square feet extra to the tenant why has this been done because in the past 30 years barely 750 buildings have been reconstructed redeveloped by the developers but 1700 properties are such where the developers have obtained consent from the people for 405 square feet or 410 square feet rehabilitation area and got permissions and done nothing now in all such properties 1700 properties the profit is going to be doubled taking in in the girgam chawl example we have taken 200 tenants but even if you take 100 tenants about 50 crores to 60 crores additional profit multiply that by 1700 buildings which means a very simple calculation between 80,000 to 90,000 crores are being made by the developer and the tenants gets, get nothing. Why was this done? It's obviously the builder's lobby which has been working. Whether it is one government or the other, there, there are builders who sponsor the elections for the MLAs. There are builders who take care of the political parties. Every political party literally has some builder backing them or behind them. And there are some political parties who have their office bearers who are prominent builders. And they seem to have played a key role in changing this DCR. So what do, do the tenants do now? It's simple. Do not sign on the dotted line for any developer. And those who are presently occupying less than 400 square feet should insist on a carpet area of 600 square feet minimum because that would still be affordable. Otherwise, unless you give consent, unless 51% give consent, the earlier consent level was 70%. The government has reduced that to 51%, which is a crime, which is wrong, which the tenants abhor. They do not like what government has done, but government has still done it. So today, the norm is 51%. So 51% should not sign with any developer unless the developer agrees to give them 600 square feet a two bedroom hall apartment so all the tenants should unite together and not sign with any developer unless the developer gives them a share of their profit even then the developers get huge amount of profit but what has what will happen to the 1700 buildings where the developer has already entered into agreement for a lower area and the people have signed with the developer 
they are well within their rights to just withdraw the consents given and ask the developer to come up with fresh consent they can write straight away to mada and the government saying that the earlier consent should be treated as withdrawn or cancelled once the original consents get withdrawn or cancelled there is no consent available so the noc has to be cancelled for the for the builder and once this noc is cancelled the builder has to come back to the residents and ask for their fresh consents and the fresh consent should not be given unless the carpet area should be 550 or 600 only then can tenants get part of the profits that the builder makes and that is what the tenant should do so this is a platform which educates the tenants into the kind of profits that their builders are making and helps them to participate in the process of equitable distribution of some kind of profits of course the builder will make more profit but at least the tenants will get portion of it under the self free development scheme the tenants can tell the landlord or the builder that let us develop it jointly and if they develop it jointly the entire profit will be shared with the developers and the developers will not get away with the cold blooded murder or obscene profits as has been declared for them so this is what needs to be done there is a very very important thing for those who are presently occupying more area than 400 square feet those who are occupying 2000 square feet or 1000 square feet the policy does not permit them free area so they need to further negotiate with the developer to ensure that whatever area they are presently occupying they should get plus they should get 35% fungible area and plus they should get at least 15% of the area in lieu of the maximum amount of profit that the government is permitting the builders it is only when the tenants unite and the once in larger premises do not sign on the dotted line with the developers unless whatever they have occupied plus 50% extra area is given to them even those who are occupying single rooms and smaller areas should not sign with the developers and withdraw their earlier given consents only when that happens will there be certain amount of justice done let me from this platform appeal to the government that you have given windfall profits to the developers but please please ensure that the tenants get some part of this profits in term of extra area in terms of some corpus presently the dc rule does not provide any such benefits now these benefits ought to come to the tenants they are not going to come to the tenants unless tenants unite and this is a call to all tenants to unite the government has made the laws which are entirely pro builders you must get together and show your collective strength and bargaining power and ensure that you get whatever maximum you can get in the given situation because it is your consent which permits redevelopment alternatively you offer to take over the building the latest amendment to the mahada act also provides for 15% of the sellable area at the ready reckoner price to be paid to the landlord earlier it was 15% of the 50% incentive that was given 
as incentive on the rehab portion. Now that has increased from 75 to 100. So even the 15% compensation to be given to the landlord has increased substantially. And it has become well beyond the capacity of the tenants to pay this. Fortunately for us, the president of India has not yet signed on the law and it has not yet been made implementable. So there are corporation elections when various political parties will come to you. And dear tenants, please impress upon these political parties that you have given windfalls to the developer. Ensure that the tenants also get their share. If the tenants get shares, then redevelopment will be possible. And the best redevelopment possible is under the self-redevelopment scheme. With this, this is Chandrasekhar Prabhu once again bidding you au revoir, promising you to come back with many more posts on this amendment to the DC rules and other amendment which affect the redeveloped buildings, the reconstructed buildings of MADA and PMGP. We will deal with that in our next uh, post. Bye for now.